G'day guys, Eddie Springer, Springer Solar, here to talk to you again about something that I'm most passionate about. Um, we're going to delve into solar panels today. So we're going to talk about all the different types of panels, different panel voltages, different uh, panel cell structure, and we're going to look at different options of solar panels you can use to charge your batteries in your rigs. For me, I have two rules when it comes to solar. Rule number one, not all solar panels are created equal. There's some real rubbish solar panels in the market and there are some excellent quality solar panels. We're gonna look at what to look for in different solar panels to work out why one panel might be better than the other and how to tell what, what is a better quality panel because not all, not all solar panels are created equally. Rule number two, a what's a what no matter what. So when we're looking at the wattage of our panels, no matter its system, out, its, its cell structure, its uh, cell type, or its panel voltage, none of that matters when we're comparing wattage. But when we're comparing the wattage of a panel, we sort of need to refer to rule number one as well, which is not all solar panels are created equal. Some panels may claim a higher wattage than they're actually delivering. So we need to look at these two, two rules in tandem. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's, let's have a look at some of these panels and we'll talk about uh, why they're good and, and why they may not be. So the first panel type I wanna talk about is an amorphous crystalline solar panel. So that's this one here. We can tell it's an amorphous panel because it's really black and uniform in color. Now amorphous or thin film solar technology is, is our least efficient cell structure. So by least efficient, it just means it takes up the most amount of area. So largest surface area. This panel here is 145 watts. Uh, this panel here is 140 watts. So it's bigger than the guy next to him. But let's concentrate on the amorphous panel. This one here works really well in low light conditions, works really well in partial shading, and works really well in high temperature. So an amorphous panel in a rigid like this or amorphous panels get predominantly used in your fold-up blankets, your roll-out uh, solar cells, and they, they work quite well. Only downside being they take up a bit more room. The next type of solar panel I want to talk about is a polycrystalline panel. So this is a polycrystalline solar panel. Um, we can tell it's a poly because the, the cell structure is quite square and it's a really bl uh, light blue uh, panel. Monocrystalline has diamonds on the front of it, so the corners of the cells are cut. So polycrystalline, next one up in our efficiency stakes. So it's more efficient than amorphous, not as efficient as a mono. Uh, this uh, polycrystalline panel, about 140 watts, um, good value for money. Polycrystalline panels are cheaper than monocrystalline panels, but not as efficient. The next panel type is a monocrystalline. So mono being, uh, is the most efficient out of our cell structure. We can tell it's mono because of these white squares in the middle of the corners cut off the cells. Uh, and it's more efficient. That's 160 watt mono versus 140 watt uh, poly. The next thing to look at with the poly and the mono panels is, is our bus bars. Okay, the bus bar is what carries the energy from the silicon cells back up to our junction box and from there down to our regulator. So these are a three bus bar panel. This is a two bus bar panel. And then we go down into a 12 bus bar panel and a rear contact bus bar panel. So theory says the more bus bars we have, the more efficient the panel will be at converting the sunlight into energy. But you know, there's no point putting 30 bus bars on a cell or we'll, we'll have no cell left. We'll have no, in, no uh, ability to capture the energy from the sun. So amorphous, poly and mono. The next thing to look at is, well, how many cells are on our, uh, on our panels? Because the cells of these panels determines the system voltage. Our amorphous is a bit different. This panel here will actually put out 90 volts DC. So if we put two of those panels together at 90 volts, we're at 180 volts, we need, we need a qualified electrician to install two of those panels in series. One panel under 120 volts, we're fine, but that's a 90 volt panel. 
Now that's not a problem as long as we've got the right type of regulator to handle the output of that panel. Okay, we, we, our regulator, our, our panel voltage determines the regulator we will need to use. These panels here, these three, uh, these two, sorry, 140 watts, 160 watts, they're both what we call a 36 cell panel. So if we count up all the cells on, on those two panels, 36 overall cells, which makes them a 12 volt nominal panel. So we can use these to charge a 12 volt battery with a standard solar regulator. The output voltage on these two panels is about 20 or 21 volts open circuit. That voltage gets stepped down to charge our batteries at 12 volt. Now we're going to do another series on uh, solar regulators shortly, so we'll cover more about the conversion of the energy in a later, in a later video. 20, uh, 12 volt nominal panels, about 20 volts output. This panel here, smaller cell structure, and it is a 72 cell panel. 72 cell, twice as many as uh, 36. This panel is a 24 volt nominal panel. It's putting out about 42 to 44 volts open circuit. Okay, this panel can still be used to charge a 12 volt battery, but it can also be used to charge a 24 volt battery. Okay, we move from a 72 cell panel, smaller cell, up into our 60 cell panels. These are residential rooftop solar panels that we'd use on a house or on a commercial building. We can also use them on our caravans. We need to ensure they're installed in a way to uh, make sure that they don't get too much movement, but these panels can be used for our RVs. This is a 60 cell panel or 20 volt nominal output. Just means the panel output is about 36 volts. We can use this to charge uh, 12 volt panels but we would need more than one of these to charge 24 volt panels. Okay, more than one in series to get our, our system voltage up high enough to charge our 24 volt panels. You can see on this panel here, this is actually an LG panel. It's got 12 bus bars on it. It's a really high efficient panel. This is a 330 watt panel versus a 205 watt panel. So you can see for not much more area, we're getting much higher performance from the cells. 330 watts, 205 watts versus 365 watts. Okay, rear contact bus bars just means that the, the cell structure is able to capture all the sunlight from uh, sun's energy. So the bus bar is tucked in behind the cell, makes it the, one of the most efficient panels on the market. You know, if we've got a really tight roof space, a really small area, then we want to use the most efficient panel. We want to use monocrystalline and high performing. If we've got plenty of room and you know, we're not using, drawing much energy, we could get away with a, with a less expensive panel, something that is a bit cheaper um, because we don't need that much energy. Solar panels, when we first started in business 16 years ago, were selling for $10 a watt, you know, $850 for an 80 watt panel. These days you can get an 80 watt panel for a couple of hundred bucks. So oversizing your solar system and going to a larger solar system allows you the cheapest way to get energy into your battery system. You want to ensure that you've got enough solar on the roof that in bad weather, in morning or afternoon shade, that you're capturing the sun's energy. Solar panels work best in full direct sunlight. Now, when we're installing these on a caravan rooftop or an RV rooftop or on your four-wheel drive, predominantly they're being installed flat to roof. Okay, so we're never going to see the full 140 watts out of this panel. You know, 140 watt panel when tested in a laboratory at standard test conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, 1000 watts per square metre of light, is not going to produce 140 watts in real world conditions. We allow for about 85% of that 140 watts to be delivered to your battery when it's pointing and facing directly at the sun. If that's installed flat on the roof, we're going to get less than that. We might get 75%, 70% out of that panel. So you need to ensure that we're sizing our panels to suit our load, to suit what we've designed our system for, 
We've done our calculations for how much energy we're going to draw out of our batteries. We've determined the battery size we need. This is what we're going to use to charge it. This is what we're going to use to charge our batteries when we're stationary. So working out the amount of panels we need to charge that battery, we need to take into account, you know, 140 watts might only give us 110 watts in real conditions. And in winter, we're going to get a lot less energy out of our panels than we do in summer. So are we designing this system for the worst day of the year or are we designing it for the best day of the year? You know, I generally size my solar setups if, uh, if you're travelling permanently on the road and you're going to be travelling every day, we size our solar panel setup for the worst day of the year in winter. You know, three peaks on ours, three and a half peaks on ours. Our 140 watt panel, three and a half peaks on ours, you know, we're only getting 500 watt hours out of that panel per day. We start going to a bigger panel, we start getting a lot more energy out of our system. So the next thing to consider with solar panels is, do we install them flat on the roof? And, and we've got the roof space to allow for that, extra, for that less energy that we're going to get than being flat? Or do we start looking at sizing our system around a portable setup? Do we design our system based on using a portable setup panel where we can get it out in the sun every day? We get it in full direct sunlight for the whole day. And we might even be able to track the sun from east around to uh, north, around to west. So portable panels have their advantages in that we can get them out in the sun. The disadvantage is if it's a larger setup with multiple fridges, with lots of equipment that's being run, you're never going to be able to carry enough solar in a portable setup. It might supplement some solar that we've got on our roof. Okay, so portable is good, but it is limited in its size. Limited in how much storage space you've got and how much weight you can carry. That's where the amorphous blankets and some of these uh, roll-up awnings and things come into their own because they're much less weight and much less size that we can pack up to store in our rigs. But we still need to consider, do we have enough wattage for our system to recharge? We've discussed batteries, we've discussed battery types and, and how much damage we can do by over discharging them. We need to ensure that the solar panels that we use charge these batteries to full each day and it's got spare capacity in the event of bad weather. One of the big things to consider when buying a solar panel or looking at a solar panel to purchase is, is the quality of the build of the panel. You know, you can get some really cheap panels and some really expensive panels. And how do you know the difference between the two? Well, the easiest thing to do is a visual inspection. You know, you can tell very quickly by looking at a solar panel as to how good or bad the build is. You know, the, the, the corners should be square and neat. The frame should be solid. The junction box should be tight. The, the, the quality of the silicon, the quality of the sealant around the edges, the uniformness of the back sheet, all of those things that you can do visual inspections on. You know, checking that there's no air under the glass, that the, that the soldering and, the, and the, the, the bus bars look intact. Some panels get made by hand in factories and some of the soldering is done by hand. You will pick that. Some panels are made on full robotic lines. You know, you, sh you will see a poor and inferior quality panel. Poor quality panels will have, you know, really light cables. These are nice, thick, heavy duty cables. You want to do some visual inspections of your solar panels. Not all solar panels are created equal. You, you, you want to ensure you're getting bang for your buck. Far too often we see solar panels that are in permanent shade on vehicles. So they might be installed really close to a, a, a roof rack. They might even be installed under a roof rack bar. They might be installed under a permanent aerial on an RV. Solar panels work best in full direct sunlight. If you want your solar panel to operate in the shade, you don't want a solar panel, you want a generator. Okay, we need to get our solar panels in as much sun as possible. Hard shadows and partial shading will dramatically reduce the output of your panels. You need to ensure as much as possible we're getting these in full direct sunlight, at least in the middle of the day. You know, school hours, nine till three is where we're gonna capture the most out of the sun. 
Morning shade, a bit of afternoon shade, not so much of a problem, but full direct sunlight in the peak part of the day. So we've covered a lot with solar panels today. They can be quite complex. It's about talking to the right people and getting the right information when designing your system. Talking to somebody who has experience installing solar panels, that can do the voltage calculations, that can work out whether you need panels in series or parallel, or what regulator you're going to need, or what types of panels to use. Seek out your professionals in the industry who know what they're doing with solar, because that will ensure that you don't have a bad experience, that you don't undercharge your batteries, that you design it right the first time so that your batteries will last, so that your systems will last and perform while you're on the road. The only undercharged batteries and the only systems that, that perform poorly are systems that have been poorly designed. You do it right with the right amount of solar and the right battery set up, you know, you will have years and years of happy travels. Thanks for your time guys, talk to you again soon.